Danny skidded to a halt in the dusty street. She didn't recognize the woman, but plenty of people she didn't know lived in Big Rock, such as the man who stood on the sidewalk beside the bank's open doors. His hands lifted halfway to show that he wasn't a threat. That was pretty obvious, anyway, given his expensive black suit, the fancy cravat, the glittering watch chain, the carefully shaven chin with a slight cleft in it, and the silver band on the flat-crowned black hat that sat on his sandy hair. Danny knew a dude when she saw one, even though she barely glanced at the man. Nearly all of her attention was focused on the quartet of bank robbers. Sheriff Monty Carson and some of his deputies ought to be there soon, but they might not arrive in time to stop the outlaws. And when the outlaws lit out, they might take the hostages with them. That wouldn't be good, so somebody had to stop them. As far as Denny could see, that was up to her. Hold it right there! The four men stopped back and away, surprised not only to be challenged, but also because a woman was doing the challenging. You came to rob the bank, you big rock? Big rock? Don't you know you could have run into Smoke Jensen here? Don't you know how many would-be bank robbers have wound up propped up on boards in front of the undertaking parlor while folks pose for photographs with the carcasses? Girl, you're loco. Shut up, you're yammering. Well, I ain't sure that's a girl. She, she got long hair, but she's dressed like a man. Yeah, well, she ain't a man. You can tell that by the way she fills out that shirt. <laughs> if you let that poor woman and a little boy go, you might just live through this. If you don't... What are you gonna do? The man, still holding the squirming boy, sneered at her. Then he remembered what the boy's mother had called him. Jeremy, listen to me. You're gonna be all right, but you need to stop wiggling around. Can you do that, Jeremy? Can you be very still? As soon as the boy stopped struggling, Denny struck. Her right hand swept down, then up, and as the gun came level, she fired. The 38 slug hit the outlaw's right eyeball, popped it like a grape, and bored through his brain. He dropped straight to the ground as Jeremy, the little boy, tumbled free. His feet hadn't hit the street by the time Denny pivoted slightly and fired again. Her target was the outlaw holding the female hostage. The bullet hit him in the throat clipped his spine. It tore a bloody, painful tunnel through his neck. He staggered, but he didn't let go of the woman. With the hostage still mostly in the way, then he couldn't rush a third shot. She knew the other two outlaws would have time to pull their triggers. She stood a good chance of dying, but at least she would save the hostages. <coughs> Son of a... <coughs> the lightning spat flame again, and the slug went in the bank robber's mouth. As he let go of the hostage and crumpled, Denny expected to hear the roar of the other two outlaw's guns, steeled herself for the bullets that were about to smash into him. She heard two shots, but she didn't feel anything hit her. One of the remaining bandits flipped backward, and the other swayed for a second before toppling. Neither of them moved once they hit the ground. Denny looked over at the sidewalk. The dude she had seen earlier, the stranger with the fancy hat band, stood with a gun in his hand. A few wisps of powder smoke curled from the muzzle. That was some pretty good shooting. I'm obliged to you, Mr... The man slipped the revolver back into a cross-draw rig under his coat, smiled at her, and pinched the brim of his hat. Oh, you're welcome, miss. The name's Morgan. Conrad Morgan. 